Hello, everybody. Hi, Cherry. So, um, I'm going to just to let you know to start with that I'm going to try and keep this live for an hour because as I told you before I always do um, what I call my monthly detox before I see my pain management doctor I don't take any pain pills because I don't want to have to increase the dosage hi Judy and uh, I'm seeing my doctor tomorrow normally I see him on uh, Fridays Thursdays on <coughs> or Fridays but because I have Thursday I have the um, whatchamacallit the uh, surgery um, I had to start it <laughs> earlier so I can uh, see him tomorrow so uh, my back is not in the best of shapes so i'm not going to do this an extended one hi chris hi aida thank you so we were going to see uh how to finish these um dragonfly wings and i thought that uh, i'm going to show you next sunday another way of making dragonfly wing beads uh these were very very easy uh, to make i showed you how to make them uh, using a texture and then next sunday i will show you how to make them using a cane and um, it will also hi carol it will also be a uh, fairly almost beginner level because we are going to use the bubble cane and that's a fairly easy cane pretty much beginner level hi jay hi leah so um as i said i have one what the heck did i do with it it was right here oh there it is uh i was going to have one already prepared so we don't have to wait for the second uh, step and show you how to do the first step right so and these are the ones that we did last time and they were directly i told you don't worry about putting paper on the tile because the backing can be shiny all at once it doesn't matter because it's going to be inside so first what we need to do is to take them off the tile And on this one, I made only one, so it won't matter. We'll just work with the other one. And the first thing that you want to do is to check the edges. And let me uh, refocus a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. And that's why I told you, don't worry about the edges when you make the beads because you can always uh, sand them to make perfect edges and see I managed to get a little bit of the glitter on the camera so you can see they are all nice and glittery but uh, see how the edge is not perfect perfectly perfect so what you want to do is to just give it a, a swipe of uh, sandpaper just a swipe not more and f just for this I'm not going to start the um, sanding wand I will uh, reserve that for the finished cooked bead so I'm going to get a 240 because you don't really care if it is not shiny all you need to do is to take away these see how it, there's a little edge here so that's all you need to do just a little bit of and now it's perfect and the same just swipe and it will get you a perfect edge all over and you don't have to use the discs from the wand you can use just the regular uh, 
It's just that I'm doing all kinds of stuff still around the house with organizing and there's something blocking my <laughs> my uh, drawers in here. Then the next thing obviously will be to make these into a bead. Now how do we make these into a bead? Obviously we need a wire and I'm going to use directly the wire from the bead rack because we need to keep it so it would have a hole to put the whatever you use for making the necklace and we will need to have something that will connect these because there's a little bit of a distance between them right so the best thing to do is to get some translucent clay and i uh, chose i have on the table here some cerny translucent but use whatever translucent and get it on a thickness that would be pretty much the thickness of the wire you're using Let's get it one more time. And yes, just to let you know, because I got a lot of messages, I'm going to do more beginner about the conditioning, about on different clays, about uh, baking on different clays, and all kinds of other stuff. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Pam. So obviously in order to do this we need to put some bacon bond or liquid clay and once again i'm going to say that i prefer to use bacon bond uh, number one because it's stronger and it's also cheaper than the liquid clay and you don't need to to put a whole bunch of it you know just i'm going to use this for both sides just swipe it because you want it to be almost dry so it wouldn't start sliding around on you hi anna and then i'm going to place first the one and go towards the exterior to make sure that i don't see how the glitter comes off uh, that I don't trap air in there and then use the roller yes this is not a roller this is a cane bender <laughs> but I just love the small <coughs> excuse me small cane benders as rollers are perfect they are multi-purpose and then I can just simply pull this off And then I'm going to do the same for this one, for the other half. First press it, go with your finger like this from the center out to push out any air bubbles that might form. And then roll with the roller. Oh, thank you, Ellen. That's so sweet. Yeah, and talking about next Sunday, because the, the surgery is going to be on a Thursday, I think I should be okay doing the, the live on Sunday by then. It might not last too long, because remember, with the first surgery, I had problems having my eyes fixed on a certain point for too long they were starting to get dry and hurt a bit so but we'll still do something i promise you good morning gaylin now comes a it's not tricky it's just you kind of place your wire pretty much where you want to go where you want your uh jewelry wire to go and of course, if you plan to put these on a leather cord, 
you will need a thicker wire than this but these are a little bit too delicate to put on a leather and then put them together make sure that they are well overlapping properly overlapping and then it's going to be a little bit messy on your hands I suggest that you use a uh, uh, nitrile gloves or something I normally don't use uh, unless it's absolutely necessary due to messiness hi June um, I don't use nitrile gloves or uh, finger cuts because I have that nerve damage on the tip of my fingers and I can barely feel anything as is if I would put uh, latex or nitrile there I would definitely not feel a thing and now you want to do just a little swipe of just a little bit not a lot of uh, bacon bond here and especially on the sides where you have the the baked clay and now you press you press really hard so some of the clay will come out hi Karen oh my goodness it's so bad dear hi Laura awesome hi Christina yeah it's it looks like did the did the hurricane already pass you Karen or it's still going hi Frandel actually it's Fran I don't know I always say Frandel uh, and for the next part, you can use either your exacto knife or if you have one of these little uh, wax carver things. And on this one, I actually prefer one that's a little bit uh, curved like this. And you just start like you were frosting a cake pretty much. But it's important to have... Uh, that bacon bond there because otherwise it would just come off and yes for this specific thing your uh, clay that's in between them has to be fairly well conditioned but and that's why we are using translucent and remember we use translucent for the wing itself for the same reason and keep pressing you need to press quite a bit you might get a little bit too much on one side it's okay you can bring a little on the other side because like here I don't looks like I don't have enough and uh, remember I told you a while ago that I do a lot of times I finish shaping my beads and my pieces when sanding that is why I needed a good solution for sanding and I've been doing so so many trials until I found that uh, pedicure one that can be used for sanding because that's how I get all that beautiful and pro look on my pieces because I sand the, the shape and I sand the heck out of it until I get what I want long 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 time ago I used to do some gemstone long 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 time ago so I'm used to shaping stuff by sanding it hi Nunya hi Justice thank you goodness gracious whispers having a nightmare I can hear him going eh? I'm gonna wake him up when I go put this in the in the oven so you want it to be fairly nice and flat here but as I said don't uh, kill yourself over making it perfect what you're interested in is to have no air absolutely no air And that's the other reason why you don't want, as I said, you don't want your to put a lot of bacon bond because if it's too much, it's go they are going to start 
sliding one on the other so this is pretty much good to go in the oven and i'm going to go get it in the yes i do i do i have a rock tumbler there's remember there's a whole bunch of stuff that's been on the back burner because i uh no never christina because i uh because of my eyesight <laughs> i couldn't work on stuff since pretty much since march properly okay i'll be right back i'll go get this in the oven Yeah, so for um, two Sundays from now, hi Natalia, uh, two Sundays from now my eyes should be okay. So we are going to start uh, making the first of the necklaces and we'll make a um, Egyptian style scarab necklace. All right, now we have the, where is it? I have this habit of losing stuff that I just touched. I just took the thing out of it. Goodness gracious. I lost my bead. <laughs> there it is. Okay. So this is the bead that was baked. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to have to shape it nicely. This is it, and yes, this time I'm going to use the uh, sanding wand. So here's my water. And of course, I got a rubber mat and thank you for the lady who got it for me but I still need to figure out how to place it properly because it's got the tendency to roll back up and the uh, wheels of my chair get stuck in the edges okay so uh, I'm not going to go I was going to go with a 120 but I'm going to go with a 240 and generally speaking I like to first wet my sandpaper and then place it no but you know christina the thing is that i just did something with it where the heck did it go you know okay and now i'm going to very gently start sanding it to get a pretty Remember, I have no depth perception right now, so it's a bit on the hit and miss. And because I want it to be really, really uh, nice and fine, I'm going to gently round these edges. Gently, gently, gently. Just a little bit. And you can do this type of beads with the uh, flowers if you want, flower petals, or even use the cane to make them. And 
and that is pretty much all that you need you can uh, sand it more and buff it if you want but it's entirely up to you i if i want to make it shinier i do that after i pl put the resin on it just because after and i'll show you just because after i put the resin on it and the resin can be sanded and buffed as well uh you mean the these these yeah it was last sunday now we just put them together so what comes next is just placing some resin and it's going to be placed on both sides And in the meantime, I'll already start the cane for next Sunday. Let me grab the resin real quick. Now, for this type of beads, you pretty much want a, a doming resin. I think that that's what I used. Didn't I use some color shift on some of these? I think I did on the other one. I used color shift. Okay, so... I'm going to use Lisa Pavelka's because it's more uh, doming than the uh, Chinese one. Let me get this refocused. Hi, Noemi. And zoomed in. Okay. So first I'm going to place some of this here. Always start from the center. And it is thick enough for it not to start pulling on the edges. So you don't have to worry about the bead becoming uh, like a saucer. But you want to go kind of all the way to the very edge. And if you want it even more domed, I suggest you apply two coats. Yeah, I'm not very fond of uh, the magic gloss myself because it's uh, a little bit too pulling, you know. And you need to be very careful when you work with it. If you place it on uh, stuff that's more on the thin side, it's going to pull on the edges and make it look like a saucer. And it's harder to apply two coat, uh, thin coat than it is with the Chinese resin. I still have the two other resins to test that I got from Polyclay Play. They are French and I still want to test the French Cleopatra. Hi Donna. Yay. I actually kind of like the smell of, <laughs> of the Chinese one. I don't know, I might be a little weird. But I don't mind the smell. Right now I'm watching on the monitor what I'm doing. I'm like one of those neurosurgeons. When they have the 
computerized stuff. I didn't get all the way here, did I? Just a second. I told you the depth perception is really off with me right now. Oh, that's not good. But you should be able to remove it. Hey, <laughs> darn it. I'm trying to see if I got everything here, but it's hard. I think I went everywhere. Now it goes in the UV lamp. Think this through very well. Okay. I couldn't find my buttons. Okay, it's uh, if you go in my Amazon influencer store, you can find it in the resin. I usually get it in uh, 100 bottles. Let me give you the... Influencer store link. And if you look on the resins you'll find it. it. I think it's the last one. I'm trying to understand what you're saying. So... Uh, I don't know how you messed it up. I would have to see it. If you want to make the flower petals stand up, I usually use uh, paper like to give you an example. So if I have, hold on, let's say that I have some flower petals, right? get off of the zoom okay so let's say that I have these flower petals that I want to place on something and I want to make them stand up what I would do, I would get thin strips of paper and as I place the flower petal there I got a, some other clay as I place the flower petal like this, I'm going to use paper rolled And you can connect even baked 
clay to baked clay but I usually like to put a little thin layer of raw clay between them you just place paper like this to hold it up and let's say I want to place this one on top of this one to hold it even higher so I have this one like this and then I want to place this one on top of it so it would stand up as well I get another little sheet of paper Uh, you would send it to the Kalyana Facebook page. So I would place with a lot of care I first put the paper there and then place my other petal, bring it over the other one and I bake like this. And then once it's baked all you have to do let it first cool and then you remove the paper and you have your petals like this so that's your best uh, bet or you can use some uh, lollipop sticks you can use uh, uh, what you call it toothpicks there's a lot of stuff that you can use okay now if we want to make a um, dragonfly wing bead with using a cane first of all obviously you will need some uh, uh, translucent and probably need a little bit more than just this And I'm going to remove the mess ups. Thank you. Um, and then make a sausage. And yes, the the lamp is still going on. So you need a cylinder pretty much and you want it to be fairly thick. I made it thinner first so I can remove some of the air that most likely went in. And you can see it right here. Where's my and I do this until I get a fat cylinder. And for this you can use pretty much any color you want. Uh, for better look, what I suggest is uh, a Skinner blend, actually. And again, with, for the Skinner blend you can use all kinds of different colors, but uh, let's go ahead and use a gray and uh, white. Let me see. I'm going to use that slate. That's the new Primo. This is my white. Let me find the slate. And this is the slate. So 
so I'm going to get a little bit of slate because I don't need a lot okay I don't need a lot of this and then I'm going to use a little bit of white and the Skinner blend is going to be very much into the white that means bringing the gray a lot into the white and you can start with black if you don't have gray just uh, mix some black and uh, white to obtain your proper uh, coloring you don't want it to be pure black and then I'm going to just get them together Alrighty. Roller, roller, roller. Sorry. And I'm going to go to the pasta machine. In just a second. Okay. And at this point, I'm going to start V-folding it, right? So I'm going to do this because I want the gray to go very much into the white. And it got to the point where I need to narrow it. So I'm fan folding. What? Shemas has an issue. What? I know. You're okay. You're fine. I'll be done in a minute. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You're fine. And I'm going to get a little bit sicker this time. this point I am going to re-narrow it and mirror it so fan fold make sure that the lines are straight hi Christy it's okay better late than never huh
and then I'm going to cut it and mirror it. That's what I meant by when I said mirror. And whenever I say mirror, this is what I mean. And I want to keep it a little bit on the narrow, so for now I'll do this on by hand and then I'll get back to the pasta machine. back to the pasta machine And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be very small and it's not going to, as it goes smaller and smaller. Hi, Darlene. Thank you. So I'm going to wrap the cylinder of translucent in this uh, Skinner blend. One more on the past on the last call on the UV lamp, and we'll do the other side. And if it's not wide enough, just gently pull on it. He's feeling unloved. So this is our basic cell for the dragonfly wing. And we will make a dragonfly wing necklace. So we'll have a few beads. Hi Sylvia, hi Joan. So, because this is a um, practical yeah, bullseye cane, but with a Skinner Blend wrap, we always go from the middle, we kind of squish the little, a little bit in the middle, so that any air that might be caught in the cane will be pushed outwards. And you just go, see, gently, gently, gently. the same the other way and I have it pretty much done it's very lumpy so let's use the acrylic block and now we have a beautiful cylinder <coughs> thank you Doris you have a great day too now, because it's going to be composed of uh, two different types of cells, I am going to cut this in two. I'm going to put one aside and then continue um, reducing this a little bit. And generally speaking, when you don't want uh, clay to come out too much, you kind of 
if you put it against your tile upwards it's going to help but uh, you're going to get some clay left behind that stays behind anyway so now remember that the dragon's fly wing has some longish cells towards the insertion and some more roundish cells towards the tip of the wing so what we need to do is to flatten this and when we flatten this we want to flatten it with the lightest part and the darkest part at the end edges ends of the flattening pretty much and after i do this we'll do the other side of the resin for the other bead got this at about two inches I'm going to cut it in half then I'm going to stack it again light end on light end and hi Robbie I'm sorry I hope it you won't have more problems with it and then gently reduce some more I'm not going to start triangularizing it yet until it gets a little bit with a little bit more cells than it has right now. So I'm going to reduce it and cut it again in half. And now I'm at four cells I can triangularize it. So again put together but now actually before putting it together I'm going to gently oops, start pinching on the light end and you want to start pinching from the middle on you don't want to pinch because if you pinch right here you're going to pull these ends together and this will stay inside So you can even do this a little bit. Use your roller. The thing is that as you can see when you pinch something, whenever you pinch something it's going to come out. So you want to equalize it. So let's do the same thing with these two. push in on this one and pull out on this one and now we can put them together And you have this elongated triangle now before we go forward let's do the other side of the bead you know what I forgot when I put the <laughs> I forgot to do but if you get bubbles in this it's fine I forgot to do a little bit of bubble burn so let's do the other side and this time I won't forget
Thank you, Leah. Let's hope I go faster with this one and I don't have as many issues. And I'm sorry, but the ones of you who know what chronic pain is, you know how it kind of befuddles your brain and you are not very careful with details. That's why when I take the detox days, I don't work much on anything. I just make sure that I have everything I need to eat, some stuff easy to prepare. And uh, pretty much just lay down watching movies and documentaries and stuff. And of course, at this point, you can add glitter, you can add other stuff if you want. So let me get this to the side. Uh, these you can find, I think I put them in the store. Let me make sure, because I think I put them in the store in the uh, resin section. Because I thought they are very nicely shaped for... Um, doing the bubble removal air bubble removal let me make sure that I got them there and there's another one that I added there there are actually two that I added there oh no these ones I didn't get on Amazon I got them at the family dollar but they are two similar that I added there and the um, Chinese resin is the very last on the list. Oh, and it's also on the second because I found two different. And I, whenever you see two things, uh, two listings of the same thing on my list, it's uh, whenever I find that certain sellers go up and down in price. So I put them both, whichever you find cheaper that day. But yeah, if you look, the fourth item on the resin list and the sixth item on the resin list are exactly this kind of stuff, but even more um, pointy. And uh, I will get some of that too. So, should be pretty good right now. And it gets in the... A magic lamp again if I don't drop it I didn't drop it and there we go okay let's continue with the with the cane let me get rid of this and now on this one we are going to divide it in two as well because we will have some larger cells as well as some smaller cells. And one more long cell, but not yet. Let's first reduce it quite a bit. And see it's exactly like a lace cane pretty much not like a bubble cane more like a lace cane only that instead of having just one color it has a skinner blend and you will always have to expect for this to look like this and if you want to avoid losing more this is lost anyway so what i suggest you do is to pinch these ends together and that will not allow this the rest of the clay to come out anymore and now you can continue reducing properly Okay, now, how big is this? Pretty much one. 
Now I'm going to cut it in, I have five inches. One of them is going to get flattened and again on the same principle with the dark and the light only that I'm not going to allow it to go sideways I'm going to flatten it like this And this I'm going to just put them together but always make sure that they have the same alignment in the uh, dark and the light. And just simply reduce them kind of squarish. I'm not going to get the square pairs just for this. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. And you just keep reducing this a whole darn lot. And it's okay if they get distorted a little bit, it's just fine. You won't have any issues with that. Just keep reducing. So I'm at, well, I can cut this in four. And again, following the same pattern with the light to light, dark to dark. And reduce this one some more as well. And it depends how small, smallish you want. I normally, I would do, well, look in the tools in the store, Karen, because you can find it there. I'm sorry you don't feel good, June. I hope you feel better soon. So you can go one or two more times if you want like this, but I'm just to make things a little bit shorter. I'm going to stop here and we have these right and we have this this will have to come with the light part towards the triangle and then I'm going to do again the light part goes towards the triangle so towards the same direction see how this one is not completely coming all the way nevertheless I am going to flatten it like this after I put it together with the triangle you'll see here in a second let me trim my ends here so Or you can use, remember that I did, uh, I think I did at least one other dragonfly wing cane before. I did a bracelet with it. And you're going to tell me, oh my god, that is such a horrible shape to reduce. No, it's not you just pinch like this and go in 
pinch like this and go in and of course you can use it for other things as well and I suggest I always suggest to use these on uh, translucent for the best effect gently rock it and let's just grab some of these cane scraps make them into an oval bead so first make a round bead and then oval it just by pressing your hands together like this it will end up to be almost like a torpedo bead. And then we'll cut some cane slices. But I'm using here uh, remnants, but I suggest you use just plain translucent, not with no other color in it. restarting the UV lamp and then once you got your slices you want to gently widen them it depends on how big your if your uh, base bead that you made is more on the larger side you cut your slices a little bit thicker and then you can Uh, widen them simply by rolling but I'll show you against the monitor how it looks because that's why I wanted to use the Primo because it's already translucent when it's now you see why you need the translucent base for your bead because this is how it's going to look like and then sorry you didn't need to see my launch pants and then you simply cover your bead you might need three slices depending on the size of the bead here I think I'm gonna need three slices and kind of get them in the same direction because if you mirror them it's going to get lost you won't be able to understand what the heck you're looking at so yeah this one needs three really I'm gonna just use this one And once it is, and you can make them using blue instead of gray or uh, violet or whatever. And then place it with the curve in the crease of your palm. If need be, you can push it in a little bit. And there you go, you have a butterfly wing bead. And of course you need to do a pokey. And once you put it on the baking wire, that's where you can refine. I showed you before how you can refine the ovaloid beads. that I have here some more of these bead wires at least I thought I did uh, 
Yes, I need to go get one from the kitchen just a second. <coughs> Okay, so, and I'll finish showing you this, and then I'll, uh, I'll I'll just show you how to sand the the resin bead next Sunday. No, not next Sunday. It's going to have to wait for a little bit because I I'm not allowed to sand after the surgery. But I'm starting to get. Uh, tired and in pain so I don't think I can keep it longer thank you Karen so remember that <clears throat> and I showed you this before but I'm gonna show it again because there's also always new new people so you get your wire with the tip right at the end of the bead and then you can do it with your hand but I prefer to do it with my uh, small acrylic block and you just go gently like this and you have a perfectly rounded tapered bead and this looks exactly like a, once it's baked and varnished it will look like it's made out of dragonfly wings and it will have a lot of 3d effect on it so, <coughs> let me see, three more minutes. It needs three more minutes for that other resin to, other side to get resin. Sorry, I just keep messing up. So, yeah, uh, Karen, you can find these both at uh, Polyclay Play and on my uh, Amazon Influencer uh, store in the tools and a lot of other things. Oh wow, you know what I did? I went and I put this in the oven. I mean, I put it in the oven, but I did not turn the oven on. So yeah, and that's to show you how much pain can befuddle your brains. But yeah, get your, uh, your beads like this. Let me just bring the scarabs to show you. So yeah, because I already showed you the dragonfly cane, um, let's just do the scarabs necklace next Sunday. Bye, Jerry. Uh, so I did, if you look back at the live where I showed you how to make scarabs, you can see I made the large one, two smaller ones, and two even smaller ones. Uh, I'm going to also use one of the um, uh, stamps with uh, hieroglyphs and those you can find them both it's one that's more expensive one that's cheaper um, in the textures uh, in the Amazon influencer store if you don't have one and if you want to get one um, and that's what we are going to do. I'm going to make these into beads, put some backing on them and uh, give them the holes. And then we are going to make some filler beads with um, hieroglyphs. So that's what we are going to do next Sunday because I think it should be much easier on my eyes. But as I said, with the sanding part, 
Uh, last time the doctor didn't allow me to sand for about two and a half weeks cause, or sand or buff because she said tiny particles can get into the eye so yeah uh, let me see this should be done so yeah this is how the bead looks like and as I said this will get sanded and buffed so it will be as shiny as the resin pretty much and you'll get another dragonfly style bead and we'll make a dragonfly necklace but uh, remember that I showed you how to do the insect -y eyes beads and when we make the dragonfly necklace I'll have to show you how to make a little dragonfly body so we have all the elements of the insect in a necklace and we'll do it that way so I really need to go uh, lay down so thank you so much for being with me here today and we learned how to put together these beads and resin them and I'll finish this whole thing probably in two or three weeks these ones but we'll make this one next time so hopefully we'll be able to finish in one go <laughs> uh, so yeah thank you for being with me and have a wonderful Sunday for the rest of the Sunday.